Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Yeah. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, the testing of visual fields. Testing of visual fields. But what exactly is the visual field? The visual field is the limit of the peripheral vision, the area which in which an object can be seen while the eye remains fixed. The visual field is the limit of the peripheral vision, the area in which an object can be seen while the eye remains fixed. Macular vision is sharp. Peripheral images are not as distinct and objects are more visible if they are moving. So these are three important concepts. Macular vision is sharp. Peripheral images are not as distinct and objects are more visible if they are moving. The field is wider in the inferior and temporal quadrants than in the superior and nasal quadrants. With binocular vision, the visual fields of the two eyes overlap except for the unpaired temporal crescent. So here you can see the visual pathway. The nasal fibers represent temporal field and the temporal fibers represent the nasal field. So the nasal fibers which represent temporal field that is which are blue in color, the nasal fibers cross over to the opposite side. So one side and the other side, the other side is the temporal fibers which is also blue in color so they don't cross over and they run ipsilaterally to the lateral geniculate body. So this uncrossed temporal fibers and crossed nasal fibers represent visual field on the opposite side. That means right visual field is represented in the left occipital cortex and left visual field is represented in the right occipital cortex. So the nasal fibers which represent temporal field cross over while the temporal fibers which represent the nasal field do not cross over and they go to the lateral geniculate body from there they run as optic radiations and go to the occipital lobe. So again the representation is just the opposite. The superior divisions represent the inferior field and the inferior optic radiations that is the temporal field represent the superior field and finally they go to the occipital lobe. The macula which represent the central field also goes through the optic pathway but finally goes to the op to the occipital pole. So the macular fibers is placed towards the end of the occipital lobe known as occipital pole. So we can divide the visual field defects into prechiasmatic that is here you can see the arrow one which represents the visual field only on the vision on only one eye the ipsilateral eye and then the chiasmatic defects where the it represents both the eyes the nasal fibers cross over so they develop bitemporal hemianopia and post chiasmatic where the nasal fibers and the temporal fibers are united and the lesions of which will give rise to the homonymous hemianopia and then finally it comes to the occipital lobe where the macula is posteriorly placed runs to the posterior pole and therefore the macula may be spared because of its wide representation and macula is, is, is supplied by not only the middle cerebral and the posterior but not only by the postcerebral artery but also by the middle cerebral artery and the anti-cerebral artery. So, the right occipital lobe represents the left side of the vision, left side occipital lobe represents the right side of the vision. Very, very important concepts. 
So now let's see what happens in the visual field effects. So if there's a lesion here that is pre-chiasmatic, there's a visual field loss in only one eye. The other eye is normal. When it comes to the chiasmatic lesion, example pituitary adenomas, where the nasal fibers cross over, they develop bitemporal hemianopia. When it comes to the optic tract, they develop homonymous hemianopia only. But here again, there's a very important concept. Here in the optic tract and the lateral geniculate body, the homonymous hemianopia is incongruous. That means it is not equally represented. One may have uh, more visual field loss, one eye, the other may have the less visual field loss. So this is known as incongruous visual field defects. So the more anterior the lesion, that is the optic tract and the lateral geniculate body, the more incongruous the visual field defects are. But when you come posteriorly, like in the occiput lobe, it becomes more congruous. So the more anterior, the more incongruous the field defects, the more posterior, the more congruent the visual field defects. It is because of the fibers, the arrangement of the fibers. Then here you can see the a homonymous hemianopia, the superior quadrantonopia, that means it is a temporal lobe defects. And here you can see the inferior quadrantonopia, that means the parietal lobe defects. And finally, here you can see the occiput lobe lesion, where you can see the center of the vision is spared, that means the macula is spared. The macula is spared because of two uh, reasons, the two presumed reasons are one, the macula has got a wide representation, so it is difficult to affect the macula as a whole. Second, the blood supply, collateral blood supply. Macula is represented not only by the posterior cerebral artery, but also by the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral arteries. Right. Now, let's check out on the testing of visual fields. This is known as confrontation method. So, how do we test? This is the simplest bedside testing of visual field effects known as confrontation method. You confront the patient. Positioning the patient and the examiner at the same level, same eye level. The eye should be at the same level. And gazing eyeball to eyeball. That means my right eye should be the patient's left eye. Doctor's left eye should be with the patient's right eye. Over an 18 to 24 inch span. So, positioning the patient and examiner at the same eye level and gazing eyeball to eyeball. That means if I close my left eye, my right eye should see the patient's left eye. And if I close my right eye, doctor's eye, the left eye should see the patient's right eye. Or an 18 to 24 inches span. And the targets are introduced midway between and brought into the visual field along various meridians. And they should appear to both patient, both the people, the patient and the doctor simultaneously in all parts of the field except temporarily because of the temporal crescent. So the technique of small finger movements in the far periphery in both an upper and lower quadrants is an excellent test. The loss of visual field to testing the red object may be apparent even when the fields are intact to a white object. So, red object, it is still more sensitive. Loss of visual field to testing red object may be more apparent even when the fields are intact to their white object. Testing with the kinetic red target, that means a red pin and make it move. So, testing with the kinetic red target had the highest combined sensitivity and specificity of any individual test. That is a bedside test of visual field known as confrontation method where patient and doctor sit against each other eyeballs at the same level one eye closed right eye looking at the left eye right eye closed left eye looking at the right eye and the object being brought from the periphery to the center red pin is more sensitive and kinetic the moving red pin is still more sensitive that is the bedside testing confrontation testing now let's see the formal visual field testing Formal visual field testing. Perimetry is the measurement of the visual field on a curved surface. Campimetry is the measurement of the visual field on a flat surface. 
the tangent screen is the standard method for performing campimetry. The central fields can be evaluated more accurately with the tangent screen and the peripheral fields more accurately with the perimetry. So these are the important concepts of testing the visual field with confrontation method and other formal visual field uh, testings like perimetry. Uh, these are the important concepts. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. Uh, most of the important neurology concepts I put in a question and answer format in my book Focused Neurology which is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. Uh, it's in a question and answer format very useful for oral so if you're interested you can buy it online. But please like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.